in spite of the fact that there's a lot of water out there way nice and warm. It's going to challenge the drivers and it's going to challenge the team. There, let's take a look at the cars that will line up. Can you believe it? Over 30 cars to take part in the Wakefield 300 this weekend. And after the practice and qualifying sessions, there's every mate that you could possibly want. And guess what, Lucky? We are ready to go. Wakefield 300 about to go green. Off they go in treacherous conditions. Will they all make it through turn one? It's Shane Otten in the V8 powered Mazda R. Wakefield 300. You've got a German classic these cars with an abundance of experience. Seven, the car that won this race last year, who's managed to get the initial jump over Dylan Thomas in the CXC Global Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 8. We're on board with the car of Jake Shelley and Michael Shaw, who gets forced a bit wide coming out of turn two by the MX-5 of David Raddatz and Nick Hansen with the Craig and Adam Burgess car, one of the father and son combinations up on the inside as well as they head up the hill into turns three and four. And you can see on these opening laps they are tippy-toeing around this track because they know how slippery it is. There's a lot of standing water. That'll go as these laps start to count down. The Burgess Burgess Nissan Skyline making its way. Oh, big sideways movement there from the race leader and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Aquaplaning in the early laps of this race is going to be on and you can see the Mitsubishis now on board with at the moment of Craig and Adam Burgess. The R32 Nissan Skyline GTR, the all-wheel drive will make it well suited to these conditions but they lose a position at the final corner with Michael Shaw going down the inside. I'm leading at the finish straight but you've got to make the turn at the end of which does so gets on the brakes nice and hard very, very tricky. And as I say, a lot of standing water there at the moment, and that's why these cars are sliding all over the place. It looks like David Radatz absolutely loves it. Well, luck hasn't really gone his way in it, though. He had a number of mechanical problems with the skyline that he and Warren Sheen had originally entered for the event. They were forced to swap into the AU Falcon, which was kindly lent to them by Armin Chard of the Ford the week between the rear wheel drive. V8 powered Mazda RX-7 and the all-wheel drive turbocharged six-cylinder Nissan GTR. Always amazes me when you get into races like this. There's always a great deal of controversy with regards to lap traffic, but the CAMS book says it's the obligation of the person overtaking to do so cleanly. It doesn't say the guy in front needs to get the hell out of your way whenever you toot your horn or wave your lights. Well, we've got a lead Blink change, Boydo, because Craig Burgess has found his way past Shane Otten and David Radatz now starting to think about challenging... Drivers actually teamed up a couple of years ago to win the Wakefield 300. Alton back in the lead, so Burgess got slowed down, maybe got balked up by one of the slower cars heading up the hill. Either that or Alton took it very, very personally and came in very late under brakes. A good manoeuvre going up the hill, a difficult part of the circuit to overtake too, but Otten is able to weave his way through the traffic exceptionally well. Burgess following suit probably just got squeezed a little bit there, but hopefully that doesn't compromise him too much. And he's under pressure too. The 55 car sitting right behind, wanting to go forward. You can see there's good little battles taking place, not just up front here in this race, but right the way through the field. Have a look at the spray being thrown up by some of these cars as well, with the extremely wet conditions. Good luck seeing where you're going if you're not in the race lead. Just impressed with the Skyline's performance. You can see even coming down through those S's there, had an enormous amount of grip, way more grip than Whoa. the Otten car that steps out under acceleration, and that's going to let Burgess go through and regain the race lead, as we saw on the previous lap. Getting it and keeping it are two different stories. So that's three changes to the lead in the space for lap there, Grant, because Shane Otten had the lead, lost it, took it back, and now has lost it again. Let's see what he can do through this section of the circuit. This is where Otten seems to be extremely quick, but the skyline has got a bit of breathing. Rectify that at the stop. We've got a few things to work out. Our well, South African team manager there, so Hoya Middach. Who has control of the field. I mentioned that this car won the race last year. On that occasion, it was Rick Shaw who drove with Steve Anslow, but it's Shane Otten who's been installed in the car for this year. And what a great job he's doing as well. He puts his foot to the floor. 
and has a good buffer now over the rest of the field. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a guinea pig because while the safety car's been out, a lot of rain has been falling. There's more standing water on the track and touched it. Back to the race leaders now and still Shane Otten, but David Raddatz has closed that margin down. So it's V8 RX-7 versus the turbocharged four-cylinder Mazda MX-5. Oh, we've got Dylan and Dave Thomas off in a big way at turn number two. He'll keep his foot to the floor, drive through the gravel trap, avoid getting bogged and get back onto the racetrack. Did a great job not to carry that through into the tyre wall. You can see skipped across the top of the sand trap because of the amount of rain that's fallen here. And has done a good job to only go down a couple of extra spots in the Mitsubishi Lancer. It's cost him a lot of time to the race leaders though, but gee, I wonder what caused that incident. I wonder if he might have hit some of that standing water down there between turns one and two. Maybe he was just watching this battle up front because it's on in earnest. Raditz with the grass in there. And a bit of debris out on the track, and that's why... Ross Wood in the VL Commodore. Spin, 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 round, round, round he goes. Looks like he might have hit some of that standing water there at turn number one. And the Commodore, that was black and white, oh. now can add brown as well. And two BMW E30s crashing simultaneously into the wall at turn number one. In reverse to try and get out of that mud, get back onto the racetrack. Well, the race continuing on at the moment, albeit at a much slower pace. Now, will this force a couple...